Perhaps you've heard me say that non-native EMFs can create harm or damage in our mitochondria. And what's going on with that? Like, what am I talking about? Why does it matter? And I think to begin this conversation, we have to break it down first. What are non-native EMFs? Well, non-native EMFs are electromagnetic fields or frequencies that are being emitted by artificial sources. So there are native electromagnetic fields. For example, the electromagnetic fields of light coming from the sun or the native electromagnetic field of the earth's geomagnetic field or the Schumann resonance. There's, there's natural endogenous frequent, natural frequencies to the earth that can be described as electromagnetic that, um, that are native and our body is aware of them and how they interact with our lives. We also make our own EMFs. Our heart, for example, our brain, um, we, we, we are always continuously actually generating electromagnetic fields, but those are the native ones. Those are endogenous native ones. Within the past hundred years or so, we've actually seen an explosion in the ability for technology to generate non-native or artificial electromagnetic fields. And what we're what the research is finally catching up on is the fact that, and it's actually not finally catching up on. There's books that were written in the 70s, 80s, early 90s about how these non-native electromagnetic fields have the potential to cause harm. And that's actually is proving to be true, especially because we are bathing ourselves in thousands of times more non-native EMFs um, in, in recent um, history and recent in the current times and we were even just 10 years ago you go and you go back it's like literally a logarithmic or an exponential amount of these frequencies because once they're generated they stay on the planet they are generated let's say from a cell phone tower or a, a wireless router or smart technology smart meters and those emissions actually accumulate between the, the a layer in the atmosphere called the ionosphere and the surface of the earth that's the same cavity where the Schumann resonance or the Schumann, which is a, a, an infrasonic frequency that our brain waves tap into, that's actually the same cavity where that frequency lives. But that cavity is now full of these non-native electromagnetic fields. And so how is that potentially harming us? Or what's, what's it, what could it possibly be doing to us? Well, first and foremost, it's creating a lot of noise for us to tap into when it comes to if we're designed to tap into the Schumann resonance and its harmonics to create a balanced brainwave state, which also connects to our breath rate and our heartbeat. If those are experiencing chaos, that's going to look like nervous system dysregulation. So we're, you know, these non-native EFFs are inherently driving nervous system dysregulation. Um, but beyond that, what's happening at the deeper levels of quantum biology? Well, Martin Paul is a researcher who has done extensive research on non-native EMFs and their ability to interact with little channels or, or openings essentially on the surface of the cells. And some of these channels are essentially ion channels. And one specific ion channel is the calcium channel or the voltage gated calcium channel. And so these are little channels that live on the surface of the cell. And their job is to open in a transient way, right? In short bursts to allow calcium to enter into the cell. When calcium enters into the cell in short bursts, it actually acts as something called a secondary messenger, meaning it's a trigger to stimulate a whole pathway to initiate. But these days, what we now realize through Martin Paul's research is that exposure to non-native electromagnetic fields is creating a constituent opening. So these voltage-gated calcium channels are staying open way longer than they were ever designed to, which means that we're starting to flood the, the interior of the cell with calcium. What does that do? Well, a couple of different things. Um, to understand this, these effects, step one would be remember that this the cell is designed to be full of this negatively charged structured water. And the health and the vitality of the cell is determined by how rich these cells are in this structured, easy exclusion zone water. And that as that negative charge drains, the cell is like, it's like draining a cell phone battery and the cell becomes more and more dysfunctional to the point where if it drains to a certain um, degree, you can get uncontrolled cell division, which could um, obviously lead to cancer. And so, and so how is calcium playing a role here? Well, it's directly impacting the charge of the cell. The voltage that's being maintained through the water is maintained through both the water and water's interaction with some key minerals, such as potassium. And if we start to change drastically the mineral composition of the interior of the cell, you start to have a cell that becomes drained of its ability to hold on to that gelled water. So that's just about one of the most basic. 
But then you take that a step further and you realize that that calcium needs to go somewhere. It, it, the cell says, okay, all this calcium inside of the interior, this is causing an issue. We need to put it somewhere. And so you're, we're designed to sequester it in certain areas. And one of the things that can sequester calcium inside of the cell as a backup method are the mitochondria. So mitochondria, they don't want to do that, right? They want to flow electrons to make water, flow protons to make ATP, generate infrared heat, essentially help to maintain the structured water inside of the cell. Um, however, if they need to, if there's calcium that's coming in too aggressively, they can sequester it. But again, they're not designed to do that at all times. And so, in, and so they'll, they'll start this process of calcium sequestering. But in the meantime, as, the, as they start to do that, they become less functional at their, job, at their um, task of flowing electrons and protons. And so you start to have what are called lost electrons, also known as reactive oxygen species. And these reactive oxygen species correlate directly to uh, what you see with increases when these voltage-gated calcium channels are open. So Martin Paul's research found that when these channels stay open constitutively, like they do when there's non-native EMFs present, that results in a cell that is uh, rife with aggressive free radicals. So things like the hydroxyl radical and peroxynitrate. Those ones are, these are radicals that are um, uh, harder for the body to calm the damage that's occurring from them. And so you got these channels staying open, you're draining of the, the, the structured water, and you're generating lots of free radical damage, which will start to continue to damage the mitochondria. So the mitochondria start to become more and more dysfunctional. And so they're, they're, they're shot essentially at maintaining adequate water, uh, water infrared and ATP production goes down drastically as well. And so this is a cell that just becomes highly dysfunctional. And if you get enough of these highly dysfunctional cells with, with a lot of mitochondrial dysfunction that accumulate in a given tissue, that's going to, that tissue is going to start to express dis-ease or symptoms because the cell, the, the tissue itself won't have enough energetic vitality. It won't have enough charge or energy to run all the programs that it needs to run. You take this one step further and you look at Dr. Jerry Pollack's research when it comes to exposing Petri dishes that uh, of gelled water essentially to wireless radiation. And uh, to see, can this exclusion zone gelled structured water, this negatively charged water, can it form in the presence of wireless radiation? And so what he did was he would take a Petri dish and in that Petri dish, you put a surface inside of it called Nathion that imitates our biological surfaces. They are cell membrane, for example. Um, so naturally, if you put Nathion into water, you'll create an area of exclusions on water that, that's designed to naturally form. Now that area in response to infrared light energies can increase three to fourfold. So that exclusion zone gelled water can expand if you, pro if you provide the right energies. What Jerry's um, uh, research found was that if you put that, if you put that Nathion and water next to a Wi-Fi router, you actually decrease the ability of the exclusion zone to form in the first place. So instead of forming full, it's forming, it's forming about 80%. So you're already starting with the drained water battery. And then you add in the fact that this, the, these, uh, uh, the damaging calcium influx, the damage to the mitochondria, the generation of these free radicals, and you start to see the bigger picture about what's going on deep inside the, the cells and how exposure to non native EMFs can create dysfunction of all sorts. Um, and so what do we do about it? Right? I don't want to fear monger. I want to inform, but I also then want to support you in what you can do about it. And part of it is just becoming aware of this. So ever since I started to learn about this, I realized that I don't want to put wireless technology on my physical body. So I don't want to use wireless headsets. I don't want to use an Apple watch. I choose not to carry my cell phone on my physical person, right? Whenever I possibly can. Uh, we hardwired our house and we use hardwired whenever possible. We've, um, we shut off the Wi-Fi router at night and at other times when it's not in use. Um, and then we are aware of especially creating a low EMF sleep space. So phones would go on airplane mode or they would go into the hallway turned with the volume up in case we need to reach, someone needs to reach us at night. 
Um, we unplug things because just having things plugged in attached to electricity actually has the opportunity to generate more of these non-native EMFs. So in the bedroom, things are unplugged. Throughout the house, things are unplugged. We don't use smart technology. So we have chosen not to use Alexas or um, you know, smart washing machines or smart, smart refrigerators, right? Things like that. And in making those choices, you drastically lower the amount of non-native EMFs that you're exposed to on a daily basis. And then from there, I've explored a lot of different strategies that you can use to do something called harmonize them, which I used to think was really woo and could not possibly be a, a thing. And it's going to be beyond the scope of this particular video to go into the details on that. But if you're interested in looking at harmonizing technologies, you're going to want to look at things like biogeometry. Um, literally, people such as Ibrahim Karim in biogeometry who have harmonized entire cities from um, the harmful effects of non-native EMFs through the use of shape, specific shape and specific forms. Um, and that, it, while if that sounds wild, just know that there's 50 years beyond, behind that and massive amounts of research and data uh, that, that has come with that, that I just love learning about because I think it's empowering for us to know that yes, we can choose how we uh, change our habits and our behaviors to lower the amount of wireless radiation or, or non-native EMFs that we expose ourselves to. But at the same time, I do think it's beneficial to add in a source of harmonizing. And I do believe biogeometry provides a, one beautiful way that you could learn more about that. So non-native EMFs, do your best. Remember, I think fear is worse than the EMFs themselves. Um, and so do not have fear, just uh, be aware have the knowledge, and then know that there's things that you can do to support your exposures and maintain that beautiful exclusion zone water inside of your cells and healthy mitochondrial function.